Boy, that's pretty wild looking, isn't it? Look at that poor dead lizard. Man, those ants are really on it, huh? Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. November 10th, 2024, let's get into it. First off, happy Marine Corps birthday to all my fellow Marines out there. You served your country well. You went through, hopefully, Paris Island. I don't know about your Hollywood Marines out in California, but that's all right. You're still a Marine. So happy Marine Corps birthday. So uh, if you want to cut the video off right here, it's fine. I'm just going to tell you the theme of this video because it's going to be all about the uh, Israeli-Palestinian uh, war. Uh, just mainly because of a couple of comments that I got. The first thing I wanted to start with was um, some testimony. Now, if you're a Christian, testimony is very important. Now, whether you want to believe that testimony or not, that's up to you. Uh, if I get testimony on the other side of the fence, I will play that also. But this is a woman talking about what really took place during that, I think it was a soccer game, or football as they call it in Europe. And uh, let's watch her. Two days ago, Zionist hooligans from the Tel Aviv Football Club, they came to Amsterdam because they had a match against Ajax. As we predicted, they were very violent. They roamed the streets with around 200 people at the same time. They would take down Palestine flags everywhere which they would see them. And we have footage of them singing a song that there are no schools in Gaza anymore because they burned all the children. Simultaneously, they also attacked a cab driver who spoke out against them. We all knew that this was going to happen because the football club already stated before the match, before coming here, that they were going to bring the Ailey Secret Service to Mossad. So we knew that they were going to be violent. And we also knew that amongst them supporters, a lot of them are IDF soldiers who have on their Facebook footage of being enlisted in the same army that's committing genocide. Who it is, we requested the municipality, the football club, to cancel the match or at least allow the supporters here. They were violent, violent as fuck. No media outlet responded to this. The only way we know is because as a movement, we got quite good at sharing footages with each other. Back two days when they were being violent, the moment they harassed one of the taxi drivers, they got a response. Thing is, the taxi drivers here, as I think all over the world, are quite well connected with each other. So within no time, over a hundred taxi drivers came to the city center and chased the hooligans away. Chased them towards the casino, or some of them would jump in the canals. What do you expect? If you come to our streets and sing about burning Gaza down, it was all before the match even happened. Yesterday, the match happened. And I remember driving to my work at 9.30 in the morning and I was driving on the highway and like five or six buses from the riot police were passing me. 9.30 in the morning, the match was at night. The whole city was tense. After the match, there were clashes. On one hand, the Zionist hooligans, they were also, again, burning shit down in our streets because they lost a match with 5-0. I mean, I'm still upset with Ajax for their responding to all of this shit, but at least, you know, they fucked them up on the field. So they were upset about their loss. They came to our center, shut shit down. And there were responses. We had protesters clashing with the Zionist hooligans. But hey, in Amsterdam, a Zionist hooligan can fuck up our streets, can burn down Palestine flags, can sing songs about burning Gaza down. But the moment you respond to them, the riot police emerged. They arrested over 50 protesters. And as according to the Zionist playbook, of course, this morning, Netanyahu sent out a statement, called a prime minister. He said that he sent out airplanes to pick up 
the hooligans because it was too dangerous for them. Interestingly enough, Schiphol, our airport, doesn't know anything about this. But yeah, instead of fact-checking Israel, of course, our media just follows them. And all of a sudden, all over the news, it was about how the hooligans were harassed by protesters, how it was about religion as well. It was never about religion. There was a clash with them because they're part of a genocide. According to the Zionist playbook, of course, you only focus on the counter response instead of the context in which it happened. So the media followed the complete narrative of Netanyahu that it was anti-Semitic. Secondly, most of our politicians just followed Netanyahu on this, making statements that anti-Semitism is not allowed, completely omitting the fact that the night before, Zionist hooligans fucked up our city, hacked people, completely omitting that fact, going completely into this discourse of it being unsafe here for Jewish people. Come on, even, even the Socialist Party, even the Socialist Party went with this narrative. And as somebody from Amsterdam, let it be known that even though our, our authorities, our media and our politicians follow the Zionist playbook, just eat this, eat this sandwich of shit that Netanyahu is feeding them, the people stand with Palestine. Okay, so that was her. Then... I wanted to get to the next video. And this is Colonel McGregor talking about the destruction of Gaza and how nobody's going to be able to live there until, well, the Israelis will once they rebuild it, assuming they survive. I'm not sure Israel's going to survive at this point. I mean, they are, their, their economy's in shambles. You know, the port's been closed down. The only thing keeping them afloat right now is money from the United States, if you can call it money, printed currency or printed debt from the United States, how long that we're going to be able to sustain a $35 trillion, well, 36, I think now we're getting damn close. So, uh, you know, you can see how fast that debt's going up. We, we have got to have hyperinflation at some point. I understand the world's still using the dollars, but that's, that's rapidly. And I say rapidly, I'm talking within the next year or two, you know, coming to a halt. And all that debt and dollar bills are going to come flying back to the United States. But let's watch Colonel McGregor now. Now, what does this mean? This means that at this point in time, the Israelis have done about as much as they can do in Lebanon and Gaza. Now, they can continue to bomb and destroy infrastructure. And people are upset over hospitals and schools and other things being destroyed. This is part of the plan. It's to destroy all of the infrastructure, making it impossible for anybody to live there forcing the, the millions that live in these places to leave, to go somewhere else, or die one way or the other. And this is what we in London are strongly supporting. However, <clears throat> the Israelis are not winning, per se, on the battlefield. In other words, they're taking losses in uh, southern Lebanon that are quite heavy. They continue to take losses down in Gaza whenever they go in on the ground. They realize that uh, they cannot continue on this path without some sort of dramatic victory elsewhere. And the elsewhere, frankly, is Iran. All right, so it's Colonel McGregor. Then there's uh, another video. I think this might've been Amsterdam police uh, talking about what really took place. Let's watch that video. Army supporters wordt op het Rokin een vlag van de gevel gehaald. En ze vernielen een taxi. Op de dam wordt een Palestijnse vlag in brand gestoken. On the day of the match, a large group of Maccabee fans gathered in Dam Square in central Amsterdam. Some arrests were made after trouble between the Israeli club's fans and pro-Palestine protesters, police said. Then, on their way to the match, some Maccabee fans were filmed singing racist and anti-Arab songs. Okay, and then I think I might even have one more video. If I don't, I'll just cut this out. Let's watch that. The Prince of Darkness himself, Tony Blair, responsible for a million dead, thousands of them British service personnel, in wars that he chose to fight and to join, which had nothing to do with us, which were entirely the wrong thing to do in response to international events, was there. 
at the Cenotaph with the little princelings and Princess Liz Truss. They were, oh, I had almost forgotten Theresa May. She was there to six British Prime Ministers, each of them responsible for the needless deaths of British service personnel, each of them supporting whatever the next war their successor is planning to join. Keir Starmer, the war criminal. Keir Starmer, the key participant in the genocide of the Palestinian people, in the mass murder of the Lebanese people. We now know 70% of the deaths in the Gaza Strip and in Lebanon are women and children. And guess what? The largest segment by age of those murdered in Gaza and in Lebanon are children between the ages of five and nine. Never mind working nine till five, five till nine is the largest single group of people murdered, people murdered, children murdered in the atrocities being committed by Sir Kid Starver, Keir Starmer, the current British Prime Minister. But he will have had the wholehearted support of the waxen hypocrites standing all around him in Whitehall today. It is a perfectly proper ceremony. I myself have participated in it. It is perfectly proper to wear poppies in remembrance of those who fell in wars, wars that had to be fought and wars that should never have been fought. The World Wars two and one respectively. It is entirely correct to remember the victims of conflict. But when the people leading the commemoration are people who are presently, currently involved in mass murder across the globe and contemplating, joining, even fomenting still greater conflicts, the only word is hypocrites. In the words of my national poet, Robert Burns, in his ode on the occasion of a thanksgiving. Ye hypocrites, are these your pranks to murder men and gee God thanks? Halt, desist, and go nay further. God will no accept your thanks for murder. That's my words on the National Remembrance Day parade today. The conflicts, of course, continue to burn in the Middle East. The big conflict with the Islamic Republic of Iran hangs in the balance. And the massive conflict that these leaders themselves fomented as a matter of deliberate policy in the Ukraine, and a million Ukrainians have paid with their blood on the ground, is not just hanging in the balance, but precariously dangling by a thread. The battlefield successes of the Russian military and perhaps above all, the incredible result of the American presidential election last Tuesday, which led to our biggest ever audience on the mother of all talk shows. My monologue was clipped by no less than Ricky Gervais and achieved 200,000 views on his platform, as well as millions on our own platform. That incredible victory by Donald Trump, the biggest landslide in American political history, when the gaslighters and professional liars of the mass media told you right up to the middle of the night that Kamala Harris had it in the bag, that the convicted felon, that the sex pest, that the rude vulgarian, the orange man, the straw-headed man, all the epithets of liberal journalists and politicians all came to naught. The American people rose up. They rose up almost as one. Donald Trump, as predicted exclusively here, I've been checking, I'm the only person that you heard broadcasting the prediction that Trump would win the popular vote and a landslide victory in the electoral college vote. You came to the right place. This is the college of knowledge. Because we here 
understand the mass of the people, whereas the other commentators and their political cohort listen only to those in the bubble. They confuse what they want to happen with an honest prediction of what is much more likely to happen. It was the working class of America what done it. The working class, the marginalized, the alienated, the despised. It was they who voted for the human Molotov cocktail that is Donald Trump. The outcome, of course, is far from guaranteed. The defeat of Kamala Harris and the oh-so-achingly progressive liberals of the Democratic Party was necessary, but it is not sufficient. What will be sufficient is if Donald Trump stays true to the election campaign that he ran in 2016 and again this week in 2024. Okay, so that's uh, everything about Israel. So uh, the uh, other thing I wanted to say to you is I'm putting, uh, or I'm putting up an X post, or will I've put up by the time you watch this video, about a digital, back when I wrote my book, The Internet is Infected, uh, the whole, a whole chapter was dedicated to the NSA and what they did, uh, you know, um, spying on America, Clapper lying to Congress, you know, all of the abuses. And so I wrote a digital uh, First Amendment that I thought we needed to add to the Constitution. You'll see that. A little bit of car noise here. Sorry about that. That, that would be uh, added to the, uh, I wanted it added to the um, Constitution. I don't know if we'll ever get it, but uh, I posted already Trump's uh, speech on how he's going to establish free speech. You can watch that on X, or you can go back a couple of videos in, uh, on, on, my, on my videos, and you can watch that. I won't put it up again. Uh, but uh, anyway, so he, obviously you're seeing my proposal for a digital Fourth Amendment. So anyway, I know it seems strange to put that in an Israeli uh, talk video, but uh, anyway, I just wanted to get that out there right now. What kind of insect is that? I see these quite often here in Florida. Look at that. Hmm? Just curious. And I still, I love walking along here. They've been working on this for like two years or something. I thought it was going to be a dump, and maybe it still will be. If you uh, work in the uh, industry, or, you know, I, I want to say construction, but there's no construction in there. Maybe the digging industry. <laughs> I don't know what industry that would be. But what are they doing with all of this? Uh, look over here. They, first, they moved all the dirt up into this big mound. Now it looks like they're digging it back out again. I, I don't know. I mean, it could be a rain. Or, you know, here in Florida, we do have some low areas where we allow the water to drain. Uh, so maybe that's what they're doing. I don't know. By the way, I apologize for all of the, the background noise of the cars. I can't get the, uh, maybe it's because my hands don't work real well, but I can't get the little wind muff on the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the receiver. You know for my voice and so without the wind muff you get all of the background noise and uh i swear i've tried i bet i spent you know, sitting in front of the tv i bet i spent half an hour trying to get the thing in there and then the you know the problem is even if i ever got it in there <laughs> to, to recharge the receiver you gotta uh, take it out of the muff so then i'd be doing that fight all over again so anyway until i solve that mystery maybe there's some kind of technique to use but Somebody explain that to me. So there's another view. Almost 0% chance of rain, and I'm getting rained on right now. I would need a job as a weatherman in Florida because it doesn't seem like they ever get the forecast right, but see what I'm talking about? That's just another view of it. Now, we got some good news, of course. Uh, they listen to, uh, boy, I tell you, X is having a real influence on the world uh, because uh, everybody was saying not Pompeo, because there was a rumor going around he was going to be the chief of, I don't know what, what, what his position was going to be, Secretary of State or something like that. So Trump put out a 
a post on uh, True Social saying that Nikki Haley and Mike Pompeo will not be uh, in his administration. Thank God. Both of those are neocon lunatics that would uh, that wage war on the entire world and probably get us all killed. So thank God that Trump came around there. So here's a, a look at what I, what I call a drainage ditch. Okay. Sorry, you're getting a little... I have to had to take the super study off because it's getting kind of dark here. But there's another view. But the uh, so the news was the news was that Trump or Mitch McConnell, the turtle as I call him, he's called a secret session trying to get a neocon to take over as leader of the Senate. And uh, of course, I want Rick Scott. Actually, I would much prefer Rand Paul. Uh, but Rick Scott, at least he's on the the, the ballot, I think. In the Senate, and so the question would be, how many Democrats are going to vote for Rick Scott versus the Rhino, uh, or I call them Democrats, which you can call them Rhinos, uh, Thum, and I can't remember the other one. It starts with a C. Uh, I put his name up, you know, and they are—they are lunatics. If they take over, it's just going to be—they uh, might even be worse than the turtle. Although the turtle has been sabotaging Republican elections for many years, so I don't know if they would do the same. Maybe they might be slightly better than the turtle. I just thank God that that 80-year-old turtle or 80-some-year-old turtle is getting out of, out of Congress. So that was uh, another piece of good news for, uh, for a rebirth of the Republican Party. And uh, the, uh, I guess, well, you know about the woman chief of staff and the media is not reporting on that. But, you know, talking about the media just a minute, I think that most Americans now don't trust the media, except Democrats. Democrats will trust the media no matter what they say. They could say the sky was, was, uh, what you know, let's pick a color. Uh, well, it's red sometimes. <laughs> I guess it's blue. Uh, yeah, it could be yellow a little bit, but uh, uh, let's just say some color that uh, is impossible, you know, uh, and, and the, the Democrats would believe it. They'll believe anything the media tells them. It's unbelievable. So uh, anyway, I guess that's, just what I want to talk about. Do you trust the media? Because everything I'm seeing says that the the media um, is at an all-time low as far as trust goes, as they should be. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm just glad to hear that. I hope Americans are tuning in to things like Joe Rogan and podcasts. Uh, although some podcasts, you know, they're not very good. I've watched some of the the Lion podcasts. So, you know, it's just hard. It's hard to get your news. And like I said, that whole Amsterdam thing... You know, once again, I mean, you form your own opinion. I don't know if you can see it. There was a little baby calf running along there. It was really cool. So I got the big brown, brown one right over here. It's good to see that there's got, you know, they've unfortunately a lot of this grazing land and farmland around central Florida is being turned into uh, 7-Elevens and gas stations and everything else. There's, there's a little calf. Can you see him? Isn't that cute? Uh, anyway, I love all animals. Anyway, I did want to talk about the election just a minute. You know, because I there's one thing. I, do you believe that Arizona, that the Democrat won the Senate race? I, I don't believe that. That's what they're saying. They're, well, today, I guess they're going to call it. And uh, I don't see how that's possible. Trump won, well, with a lot of lawyers in there, uh, true in the vote, thank God. And they've tried to cheat like hell. And, and Arizona is... More, well, I, I can't say more corrupt than California, but uh, I tell you what, they, they must be second in line in the United States for election uh, fraud. I mean, no doubt about it. And uh, so anyway, there, there's there been a lot of, I don't know if you knew, there's been a lot of battles in there, a lot of legal battles, judges' opinions uh, going back and forth. Uh, now that will cease, I think, once they call the election for the Democrat. But I don't see how it's possible that Trump pulls down, you know, a huge popular vote in Arizona and Kerry Lake didn't follow his coattails. Do you think there was cheating in Arizona? Leave a comment below because I certainly do. The other abnormality is Biden. I love it when it was actually Kerry Lake that coined it. It was a song. You can look it up on YouTube. 81 million votes my ass. 81 million votes my ass. So now, you know, we're looking at 81 million votes for Biden. I don't know, it was like 77 million or something for Trump, or something like that. And then you come around to this election, and Trump gets less votes and wins the election 
and Kamala gets 20 million less than Trump. But this time everybody was on the alert. Everybody was looking out for fraud. You know, everybody was ready with the lawyers and everything else because we got Laura Trump and got that rhino or Democrat that was sabotaging all the Republican elections, uh, Ronna Romney McDaniels. We got her out and you see what a difference it made. You know, when you get good people in charge, that's what it does. Let's get one more look at the cattle. Isn't that, isn't that great? Uh, I don't know if we'll get down there. It's going to probably get dark on me. I was going to show you the 7-Eleven that's actually going up on what used to be farmland. That's why I was talking about that. So, I always like to put on the videos. Maybe you can help me out in some fashion. I spent uh, a good four to eight hours yesterday watching, trying to learn how to use StreamYard. And from what I can tell, StreamYard is more for doing live feeds. Uh, more so, I just want to do interviews and record them and put them up what you can use StreamYard to do i understand that it's just there's not a lot of videos on how to do that and so you really end up i think i'm just going to have to just play with it and learn it on my own it's going to take a lot longer the other thing was i was trying to use so right now i'm using the phone app to record these videos and uh, i'm not even using the samsung the samsung actually has a tool that you can because i, I the default settings have been adequate for me uh, that come down from Google. There you go. Nice motorcycle. Sorry about the noise. And uh, anyway, so I wanted to use the Black Magic Design app because that's what I use for as my editing software. And uh, no matter what I did last night, I had to have the phone vertical in order to to get the video upright. And I'm like, no, I I, I keep the phone horizontal when I make my videos. I just it's just a lot easier to handle rather than vertical and a lot of my walking sticks you know they will only hold the phone horizontal so if you know a way in black magic design to allow you to film videos with you know the phone horizontal let me know because i couldn't figure it out I, I spent four hours on it i watched video after video you know playing with the settings and you know but a lot of it seems like black magic design app is mainly for iphones but they just came out recently with an Android version of the software. And that's maybe that's, you know, they just haven't finished developing the software. I mean, it does, it's really cool. You can really play with every little setting on the cameras on the phone. And, you know, a nice thing about it is you can switch zooms really easily, which, you know, a lot of times when I'm out hiking, I want to zoom in and you can't do that with the phone app. Anyway, just asking for some help. If anybody knows anything, or maybe there's a course I can take or somebody somewhere. Ooh, I wanted to get that view right there. Isn't that awesome? That's why I do this little hike along the road. I mean, I know we get a lot of car noise and stuff, but uh, it's real close to my house, which is number one. And I love the fact that the sidewalk is so far from the road. You know, a lot of sidewalks are right side of the road. You know, you get some sleepy old dude that, or a drunk driver, and they can just weave right onto that sidewalk and take you out. And I, that has happened actually to people that I know. Uh, mainly on bicycles who are riding along the side of the road but uh, anyway I just wanted to ask you uh, why do blacks and Hispanics still vote Democrat and I, I, I know I'm asking a lot of questions in this video you know Trump, I mean the Democrats brought in 30 million illegal immigrants and stuck them in the in the black cities and then funded the uh, the Im illegal immigrants and, and and just crapped all over all the black people you know, in fact, you know, the black women probably getting, you know, a thousand a month on welfare. And here you got an uh, illegal immigrant next door getting $10,000 a month who's not even from the country. And, you know, that they're trying to replace that portion of their vote. And the same with the Hispanics. I mean, if you live down, of course, we did win a lot of the border counties. But, you know, when all those illegal immigrants come in, you know, Hispanics, I don't know about you, but, you know, that's my yard crew. I'm not knocking that's hard work and i'll tell you what they're very successful they make a ton of money and a lot richer than i am but what i'm saying is that's kind of a manual labor job and an illegal immigrant can easily do that job as well as you know a sophisticated yard crew which is what i've got and uh so they're going to steal all those jobs so why are hispanics voting uh 
Because, you know, when you look at roofers, for example, and I'm not trying to be racial here, but I mean, when you look up on the roofs, I, I, Hispanic people are a lot more durable than, <laughs> than it seems like white Caucasians are. Because when you look on that roof, they're mostly uh, um, well, Hispanic, you know? And it's hot. I mean, it's a, that's a miserable job up on that roof, working away. And I respect them, man. My God, I, I couldn't do it. Not even in my prime would I want to be up on a hot roof putting down the, the shingles and whatnot. I don't know, it's just, a, just an observation. I, I just want an opinion. One final view. Just wanted you to enjoy that. And that amount outstanding. Awesome. I don't know if off in the distance there you can see that line. That's Chevy Chase right there, man. <laughs> that movie Christmas Vacation. If I can see it all the way over here. That is cool. I gotta get into that neighborhood and check out those Christmas decorations at some point. I wanted to show you why I hike at night like this. It's not night. Yeah, daylight savings time, it gets dark at six o'clock. You know, I'm, I'm just finishing up working around the house and I wanna get out and just enjoy it. Plus the nice cool temperature, really good. Anyway, there's two cars racing by here. I bet they were doing about a hundred miles an hour at least. It was crazy. I remember back in my youth doing that. Now I can't even see at night. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to show you. See, normally there's a moon. You can't see it. It's behind the clouds, and then that really lights it up. But anyway, just wanted to show you that you can get out and hike around the neighborhood, and you can see what you're doing.